Well, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to our Sunday service here online at Bethel Baptist Church Lye. Um, we're really glad that you can join us. Whether you're joining us on Sunday or, or any other time during the, the week, we, we do welcome you. Pray that God will bless you as we spend this time together um, praying, reading from the Bible and looking into his word together. Um, so I'm going to start by reading and uh, from the Bible and then, then I'll pray. So, so the reading uh, this morning, um, if you've spent any time with us at all over the last few Sunday mornings, um, on our YouTube channel or, or in person, it's like you'll know that we've been going through the book of Ephesians. And today we come to, if you like, a, a landmark day. Um, in some respects, it's a sad day because it's going to be, at least in this series, um, our last look at the book of Ephesians. Um, so I'm going to read the last few verses from chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 21. And just read through verse 24. And in the Bible I'm reading from, it's entitled, Final Greetings. So Ephesians chapter 6, start reading at verse 21. So that you also may know how I am and what I am doing, Tidicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers, and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ, with love incorruptible. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Let me, uh, let me lead us in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your blessings. And Lord, we're, we're aware that many are, are suffering today. Many are isolated, are feeling alone, and maybe separated from loved ones, friends, family. But we thank you, Heavenly Father, that um, there is no, as your people, no separation from you. As Christians, Lord, you've promised always to be with us. And we thank you for that promise. And Lord, we pray that as we spend this time this morning uh, worshipping you, that you will meet with us through your Holy Spirit and that you will open our eyes to your word, the Bible, that you, you want us to see and what you want us to learn. Lord, we pray for those who uh, we know who are in trouble, those perhaps who are suffering, those who are in hospital, Lord, and we did commit them into your care. We pray for those who are uh, nursing and caring and delivering uh, event essential goods. Pray for our police. Pray for our government and all those that you've put in authority over us, Lord. We just commit them into your care. We pray that you'll be with them um, as they make decisions concerning our futures. That they will be wise and make good choices, we pray. Lord, we pray for those too that we know around this world who are suffering. And Lord, um, in some respects, perhaps we're getting a glimpse of what it's like to be in, in countries where they're not allowed to meet together because of persecution as your people. And although, Lord, it's a very, uh, perhaps a very uh, distant, uh, frail example, Lord, we, we do commit our brothers and sisters who are in isolation because of the gospel. And we pray, Lord, that you'll be with them and that you'll bless them, that you'll strengthen their faith, make them uh, uh, brave, encourage them in your word, we pray. And so, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray for this word as it goes out, your word, that you will, you will bless it. And Lord, that perhaps through it you will encourage someone and uh, bless them too. So be with us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so Ephesians uh, chapter 6, and we're just going to look at the last, really, the last two verses this morning. I read somewhere that there's, there's no better test of a, of a man than the things that he wishes for the people that he loves the most. I thought that was interesting. You know, he desires for them, of course, perhaps his own ideal of happiness for them. I suppose that begs the question is, what do you desire most for those dearest to you? What do you desire most for those that you love? Paul 
um, as he often does writing in his letters, of which we have many in the New Testament, he doesn't leave us guessing to what he, not what he would pray for, but what he does pray for, what he does wish for, for those who are listening. Let me read again verses 23 and 24 from chapter 6. It says, Brothers, peace be to the brothers, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. And as you, as you hear those, those words from those last two verses of, of Ephesians chapter 6, does it sound familiar? Have you heard them before perhaps? Well, if you've been with us for a while, um, <laughs> it's a good while, um, I would suggest probably over two years, when we actually started Ephesians, then Paul finishes the book pretty much how he starts the book. Let me, let me read the first two. Remember, I've just read the last two verses of chapter 6. Let me read you the, the first two chap verses of chapter 1 of Ephesians. Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. They are almost identical, aren't they? If you like, I suppose you could call them bookmarks, bookends, you know? You know you've got grace and you've got peace. This, the, this theme, these themes that, that run, if you like, throughout the book of Ephesians. And sometimes we're tempted just to, you know, to skim over the, um, the last few verses of a, of a book, you know. Maybe not give them too much thought. You know, perhaps Paul was getting tired and he was perhaps getting a bit fed up, so he's just going to write some letters, say goodbye, you know, lots of love, yours sincerely, yours faithfully, Paul, and sign off. But actually, as we, as we spend time looking into these verses, we find that there's real truth, even in these last two verses, there's... There's real theology here that we would be the poorer for if we, if we jumped over it, if we skipped forward. The, the benediction here that Paul uses varies from his, his usual form, if you like. And again, that just, that just sort of suggests that this is not just a, a throwaway couple of lines at the end of a, of a particularly long and involved letter. If I'm honest, I, I don't believe Paul ever wrote any throwaway comments in any of his, his letters that he, he wrote in the New Testament. And I think Paul wrote them because he wanted his, his readers to really think about them. What he was saying, what he was praying for, what was he praying for them for. So as you've probably noticed that in the first couple of verses of, of chapter 1, he talks firstly about grace and then he goes on to peace. Whereas here in the last two verses of chapter 6, it's peace first and then he goes on to grace. And this is, this is more than just a, a farewell greeting, if you like. It's a prayer. It's a Paul is praying for reconciliation. Paul longs to see the, the whole brotherhood, the whole church, the all the believers in, in Ephesus, Jew and Gentiles alike, at peace with one another as they are in the body of Christ. And there are, uh, there are four, and maybe more, but there are four key words in Paul's benediction here that have played key roles throughout the whole book, throughout the whole letter um, to the Ephesians. And I believe they are, they are more than, than just Paul's wishes for them. You know, or the people that he loves most, they are his prayers for them. And actually, if Paul, Paul is praying this way for his loved ones, for his church, for his church family, then, then I suggest we should be praying these things for, for our church family as well. So Paul wishes, or, or better still, prays for peace for the brothers says brothers, it's brothers and sisters, peace for the church there. And this really shouldn't come as any surprise. Peace has been the, if you like, the main thread running throughout the whole of Ephesians. You know, just think of that, uh, I don't know, that, that melody that, that works its way through a, a symphony, maybe taking on different pitches and slightly different slants and variations, but it's there, you can spot it, you can pick it out as it runs through. 
What do I mean? Well, listen to a few verses just, just pulled from Ephesians. Ephesians 1 verse 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 14. For he himself is our what? Our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Ephesians 2.15 By abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he may create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. Ephesians 2.17 And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. Ephesians 4.3 Eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Earlier on in, in chapter 6, we looked at a few weeks ago, uh, verse 15, And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. And then here again in verses 23 of chapter 6, Paul writes, Peace be to the brothers, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just there running through our Ephesians, this, this, this message of peace. And we have peace with God and peace with those that we were formerly alienated from. Just think of that. Peace with God and peace with one another. How? Well, because the blood of the Lord Jesus has paid the price for our sin, which God perfect justice demands. And then we can draw near to God, not, not as a matter of being religious, Oh, that had been tried and failed. The Jews had, had been as religious as anyone could be, but, but their religion was not good enough to, to reconcile them to God. But also, though, the good news is that a sinful pagan, who has perhaps never darkened the, the door of a church, does not mean that there is no hope for you either to be reconciled to God. Rather, Paul has shown that the blood of Christ has made it possible for both the non-religious pagan and the religious Jew to, to draw near to God through faith in the Lord Jesus. But this peace with God through the cross of Christ also reconciles peoples, groups that were formerly at war with one another, alienated from one another. As I read earlier in two, uh, Ephesians 2.14, Paul says... For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. For, for Paul, a large part of the, the glory of the church is that it contained all sorts of people. He, he gives a list, if you like, in, in Colossians 3.11. He says this, No distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, Barbarian, Scythian, slave and free man. But Christ is all and in all. Oh, what a lofty prayer he's praying. Peace. Peace with God. Peace with one another. But Paul goes on to not only pray for peace, but also love for the, for the church. Love for the, the brothers and sisters. Peace and love go hand in hand, don't they? Um, Ephesians 4 that we looked at a while ago, verses 1 and 3. Yeah, we read about it. God's love for us is an example of how we are to love one another. Our homes should, should radiate, if you like, the, the self-sacrificing love of Christ. And we looked a bit about that when we were looking at the, the relationship between husband and wife and, and between parents and children. It's all there laid out for us in Ephesians. And in the church, we must work at building and maintaining loving relationships between one another. Lofty prayers indeed, aren't they? And then Paul, Paul goes on to, to pray for, for faith for the brothers and sisters. Actually, Paul prays for, for love with faith. You know, those, those two qualities are so, so closely connected. In Galatians 5, 6, Paul writes, For in Christ... Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything but faith working through love. I suppose to, to paraphrase something like this, the, the outward keeping of religious rituals is not the main thing. 
but rather faith that works itself out in deeds of love. That's the difference. And since Paul is, is praying this for the church, he is concerned with a, an increase of faith and love among those who have already believed in Christ for their eternal life. And as, as Christians, we need greater faith in Jesus Christ that will move us more towards self-sacrificing love for one another. And what's the source of this, this peace, this love, this faith? But Paul tells us in the, the second half of verse 23, he says, God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We should ask for one another and for ourselves that God would increase our peace and our love and our faith. And then we come on to the verse 24 of Paul's second benediction. It says this, Grace, grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. Paul says, not only have I prayed what I've prayed in verse 23, but you know what? I pray that God's grace will be with you. As the church in Ephesus, I pray God's grace. Oh, they've already experienced something of the riches of God's grace. Paul, Paul tells them and us about it in Ephesians 1, verses 7 and 8. He says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished on us. Paul, later on in Ephesians chapter 2, he just underlines that, that salvation is by grace alone. He says, so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And again, it's there dotted throughout Ephesians. In, in chapters 3 and 4, we see that the only way that we can serve Christ is because of his grace. But because God's grace is an inexhaustible storehouse, we need to pray for ourselves and for one another that we would experience, experience his grace more and more. Go on to notice also how Paul describes believers in verse 24. That they love our Lord Jesus Christ with incorruptible love. Incorruptible love. That, that last phrase is, is literally in incorruption. You know, it may mean incorruptible love. Or it may refer to the area that our love is, you know. If something is incorruptible, it lasts forever. It's, it's thinking and talking about eternal life. Our love will go on forever because God loved us first. You are a, a genuine Christian. If you know that God has given you eternal life in his son. And as a result, oh, you love the Lord Jesus. You love him as your Lord and you love him as your Saviour. Experiencing that great grace that he saved you, although you should have been condemned, although you deserve to be condemned, he saved you by grace. And it will increase your love for the Lord Jesus as you spend time thinking about him. So Ephesians. I suppose the great theme of Ephesians is the eternal purpose of, of God to sum up all things in the Lord Jesus. And as we've seen over these last months and couple of years actually, we've seen that um, Ephesians is, is split into, into two halves, into to two bits. The first chapters, chapters 1 to 3, Paul just reveals our exalted position in Christ in the heavenly places, all because God chose us in him before the foundation of the world. And he works through that in those first three chapters, giving us such amazing doctrines. And then the, the second half of, uh, of Ephesians chapters four to six, Paul shows how our, 
our experimental walk with Christ in this world. How we should stand firm against the evil forces of darknesses in the heavenly places. How our position is in Christ and our walk in this world as we stand victorious against these evil forces demonstrate God's eternal purposes to sum up all things in Christ. He tells us why we should do something and then he tells us what we should do as Christians. At the heart of this, this practical walk is that we get along in unity in the church and in the home. Friends, as I finish this sermon and ultimately this, this series on Ephesians, I don't want you to miss the fact that all of these truths are for those who are brethren, the Bible tells it, Christians. And you become a, a brother or, or a sister through new birth, the Bible tells us. When God's Spirit quickens your your heart from spiritual death to spiritual life. So, so what great words can I utter as I close? What well, perhaps some fine, eloquent words that would perhaps sum up Ephesians best? Nothing from me, actually. Rather, listen to Paul. Listen to Paul. As he, as he writes in chapters 2 and verses 8 to 9, he says this. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Friends, above all, as you watch this, our prayer is, make sure that you've been saved. Otherwise, everything that we've been looking at, all these great doctrines, all these ways to live, all these riches in the heavenly places, the Bible says they're not for you. They're not for you. Only for those who have put their faith and their trust in the Lord Jesus. Let me pray. Father, we, we thank you for part the Bible. We thank you for... Paul writing this book to the Ephesians. Oh Lord, we thank you for the, the places that he's taken us with regard to you and your glory and, and your purposes for your church and for us as individuals. Thank you for the way he prays that they and us would know real peace and grace and love and faith. Lord, that comes from you. And so, Holy Father, we pray now that you will increase our love increase our love for you increase our love for one another for our brothers and sisters in the church and Lord we just pray that you will build us up help us to become more like the Lord Jesus as we live day by day we ask Amen Thank you for, for joining us um, we'll be moving on to a, a new series next week uh, and I'm going to keep you guessing on that um, but hopefully, um, perhaps enjoyed, maybe too strong a word, but we hope you've enjoyed these, these sermons on Ephesians. Maybe you found them challenging, um, but we'd love to hear from you either way. Uh, and if you want to get in touch, you can either leave us a comment in uh, the bottom of the YouTube page or, or go to our website, BethelBaptistLive.co.uk. Go to the contacts page and there's a form that you can fill out. And you can ask your questions or, or we can get in touch if you want us to. And we, can, we can perhaps talk with you and we can pray with you. Uh, so thanks for joining. Subscribe. It would be great to, to hear from you. Take care. God bless.